So basically, listening to the first session today was really interesting for us because we're on the flip side trying to make a commercial viable product out of, out of, uh, out of digital and uh, we use Wikimedia Commons for example. Uh, we comply where we can. Uh, some places we might slip up, uh, Christina, is when we have like an internship program or we have a part-time staff member coming in who might not follow uh, protocol and uh, attribution, etc. But um, I just wanted to talk more, more than Creative Commons. I, I, like my introduction to Darius and Louise was, I contacted them about some of the projects we have where we try to open up what we do. Where we try to open up um, what we do from a digital engagement perspective, uh, and I'm going to focus on some of the, those things. Uh, I'm going to talk about just the audience evolution from a media perspective. Um, some of the projects we've worked on, and then where we feel we're going next with things. So. Um, our audience is in Ireland with 2 million listeners, we've 1. million uh, unique users on web, uh, we've 1 million social media users, fans, etc. across our stations, and we've 1.6 million app downloads. Uh, usage figure hovers around 50% or so. So these, all these things will become more apparent. I'm going to connect the dots uh, between all these different things at the end. So, so just to show you the growth perspective over the last few years, because there's been a massive shift in things over the last few years, uh, and I'm going to show you how some of our projects may have been more successful if we launched them now rather than we did uh, three or four years ago. Mobile growth, mobile's had a huge uh, positive effect on engagement uh, and collaboration, and, uh, and particularly uh, from an audience um, collaboration and upload uh, facility, etc. Um, just up that 1.1 million uh, unique users on our website, 60% is now mobile, so there's just an absolute seismic shift to mobile. Most of you guys are down there on mobile devices. Um, you know, when you talk, um, there's, a, there's a new term come to, uh, to head called fubbing, where people snub you with their phone. I can see 60% of you guys are doing that now, which is an accepted social norm. Uh, and uh, we t one takes no offense from such things now. Um, just a different, again, the seismic shift in mobile. Uh, 2009, Obama election, very engaged audience. Uh, 2013, everybody's tweeting each other the results. Uh, again, papal, uh, papal election, 2005, a few cameras, a few camcorders, uh, and then 2013, uh, absolutely different uh, seismic shift. These things all have a massive effect on engagement uh, and collaboration. Uh, from a media perspective, um, I'm just going to go through briefly what, what's happened and how digital has had such a positive effect. First, we had the printing press, followed by the telephone, uh, photo, video, then radio and TV. Once the internet came along, everything molded into one. The, the barriers between everything just dissolved, and they all pretty much became the, the same thing, which is why you see radio stations having TV channels or uh, getting there anyway. and. Uh, uh, magazines, uh, digital magazines, etc. The audience evolution has been really, all those previous things alone were a one-to-many uh, medium. So basically it was a monologue where a media owner would, or a publisher would speak to the public and get no feedback. And that was kind of web 1.0, where w websites were like brochure sites where you might just go to get information. You might get an email address if you were lucky. And then that that evolved to the dialogue where you might get feedback where you could uh, interact and you might have comment boxes etc uh, to to the marketer or publisher uh, and then that's web 2.0 and then the era we're in now and beyond is web 3.0 and we call that the trialogue where the marketer will speak to the public but the big difference is they can now speak to each other and that changes the game entirely and actually the, the marketer's role becomes kind of less and less uh, about speaking out, but actually creating topics for everybody else to talk about and then using that as uh, feedback to, to direct programming, for example, for, for our radio group. Um, millennials as well. So the millennial uh, evolution has come to a point where, you know, we, we've talked about a lot of things today where 
the, the producer and consumer, the lines are blurred between them and there's a new term called prosumers where people want to be part of the production process and we, we certainly see that from a digital engagement perspective. Zero tons for de delays would be like website speed, um, app speed, all that kind of thing. And then short and brief content, again, people have less time than ever before, so they want to skim through content. So th all these things will come into context in a, in a second. Um, we have a 4S rule internally that we use for all our digital properties, that things are searchable, social, so I can share them, snackable, so they're quick and I can skim through them if I like, and I can delve in deeper if I want. And then the super fast one is about internet connection speeds and a basic uh, human life uh, analogy of that is a coffee queue. Most of us go into a coffee shop. If there's more than five people in there, we might just bounce and go somewhere else. Same at web website speed or technology speed. We just want it to work instantaneously. For us, that's a, a challenge with streaming. Uh, for our radio apps where they might stall, etc., because you're depending on, on 3G technologies that might not always connect as quick as you'd like them to be. So. Uh, we're, we're trying to speed up the 4G networks as much as we can. We we'll wel welcome that as much as anybody else streaming uh, live content. Uh, the 99-1 rule is um, a rule that um, um, is very, very relevant for collaboration and engagement. And uh, some, of the, some of the things I'm going to talk about now uh, will have been very much affected by the 99-1 rule. Uh, the 99.1 rule is, for example, an engagement tool uh, where people might upload. 1% uh, of people actually contribute, and this, this is a widespread rule. 9% of the occasional contributors might comment on content, and then 90% are called creepers or lurkers who just come along and do nothing. You'll see that on, on uh, social media as well, like uh, Twitter, where people will, will watch you know, and not make necessarily comment. Um, Creevon, you actually, this is actually the, the other presentation, so if the video isn't on this one, bear with me. Please. Cheers. I just have a video to show you some of, of the things we've done. Um, but w with the 99.1 rule, um, the, the differences now between some of the projects we worked on uh, a few years ago, I'm going to show you one of them now, and now has been the growth of Facebook social media where uh, there's a term called a network effect where the more people on any, any uh, medium like so social media like Facebook, the, the more beneficial it is for everyone else. So for example, a telephone is not that useful for uh, one person, but for the more people that are using a telephone, the more beneficial it is. You report is actually a new idea that you find on newstalk.ie or the news Talk 99 to you report. Where will your story take Great idea, isn't it? Total failure <laughs> because, <laughs> because it was four years ago. Um, so we did that. I thought it was great. Uh, I thought it was a genius. Um, and then uh, the 99 run rule kicked in. Uh, less and less people came along. And, and there's another very, very important thing for, for this audience and particularly Creative Commons is when you use crowdsourced material, there's a lot of negativity associated to that where people assume you're looking for free content. You're looking for people to upload your content for free. Um, we had thought we had counteracted that where we had a sponsor on board for this 
and the sponsor really only paid for part of the technology. Um, we gave a phone away for the best uh, report every week. You saw the, the time, countdown timer there. We thought that would give a sense of urgency to upload your stories. Uh, and as, as with any of those things, you did get a lot of uh, uploads towards the end. Um, the 99.1 rule then as well I mentioned. So with the scale of Ireland, a tool like that is actually always a challenge because if you do that something like that in the States, for example, or the UK, you have a massive scale to use and to get people to engage. With this, you're talking about a smaller horizon. There's, there's about 3.1 3 million, I think, uh, digital users in Ireland. Uh, and you're, you, you're, you're relying on those who know about the product you're using or the engagement tool you're using. Um, so we didn't stop there. We kept persisting. Uh, and we came around to some more, um, some more using the same technology in a different way. Uh, we had, we had uh, ticked the box for mobile. Uh, and, but mobile back then, we were talking about probably, I think I said about 500,000 uh, app downloads. Now we're at 1.6. So the world has changed there. And one of the ways it has changed is it's easier to upload things to, a, to an app now where I can take photos or I can access or take a photo myself if I wanted or something on the street and send it straight. Much, much quicker. The technology has increased. Um, so we, 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 we did this one again. This one's called Your Spin. So uh, our, our youth uh, station, uh, Spin1038, um, totally different audience, digital natives, millennials, uh, extremely engaged. Uh, and this is how I actually got to talk to Darius and Louise initially. I just contacted the guys to make sure that we were compliant in every way. Um, the, the, the idea here was we had, an, we had Professor Green, uh, an artist from the UK, uh, we'd contacted him through the label. He gave us the song parts for his tracks. We'd, the users would come along, register, download them, remix them, upload them again. We had no idea really how it would work. We had a, an idea that Spin is extremely engaged. Uh, almost 200,000 uh, Facebook fans alone. Same on Twitter, about nearly 200,000. So we knew that we could spread the word quite easily digitally. So. This one was a total success, as uh, in, in total contrast to the other one. We had, in about a two-week period, 35 entries, really high quality. Um, and the artist got to choose then. So it went through a panel of judges, kind of an X-factor kind of thing. The artist got to choose. The person then got to go and visit uh, and go to a concert with Professor Green uh, and got, obviously, promoted from a digital perspective. Um, we used it then again a couple of different things, it, using uh, logos, people could use logos, remix them, um, and then uh, one of the recent successes was for, and we got a sponsor for this as you can see, um, uh, for um, Oxygen. So the client here wanted was a sponsor of Oxygen. What we did was we said, pick your favorite three Oxygen artists that are, are playing on Oxygen. Do a, do a mix of it, a five minute mix or two minute mix, upload it and we'll promote you some what. And you'll get to open at the Oxygen Festival, big festival in Ireland. So massive uh, prize, unique prize for, for the winner. He went on, he's, he's got some gigs since um, and has gone on to, to great things. And, and that is genuinely one of the hopes of these tools that you can both promote people, the station gets to engage in a unique way and uh, in this case, an advertiser gets reached that they wouldn't get any more away than just digital adver adverts uh, popping up on a page, interrupting people. It's a deep engagement. Um, Today FM is one of our national stations. We use it for a promotion called Shave or Die on Today FM, which is for cancer research. People upload their pictures of their, their sh where they shave their head or they dye it for, um, and it just goes into, it's, it's an engagement tool. One of the real successes we did with this one was for, again, for, for um, charity, we um, crowdsourced the chorus of a track for the Euro 2012 um, event, um, and we professionally recorded it, released it. So there was a crowdsourced chorus on that. And then a really nice thing happened where people took that work, remixed it. We had people in Thailand, in China, schools taking the track and actually remixing and uploading it to YouTube. So we had a beautiful knock-on effect, which only digital can give you. Um, so that, that's really where, where we use collaboration and, and crowdsourcing in, in the positive effect. Um, social media gives you that opportunity to, to engage deeply with a brand as well. But uh, w with, with all these things, mobile, the 99-1 rule, the millennials, all coming together, you have, there's a scientific term called the Goldilocks effect where 
everything comes together just right. And uh, we had one of those recently again with uh, Spin1038, uh, and it was in engagement through social media, on air, uh, web, and um, it was called The Drop. Here you go. That's it. Um, just to give you a brief introduction of what uh, where media is going. It's more collaborative than ever before. It's engaging. It's using mobile, using all those different touch points to the maximum instead of keeping into that monologue. We've moved to the trialogue. Cheers. <laughs>